Okay guys, today we have a big, huge Mercedes Sprinter. Don't have the diagnosis of it, but I do have um, under boost faults and on smoke testing the intake system, we have in at the very back of the intake manifold, which is buried in there, we have smoke bellowing out of somewhere buried in the back. Sorry. Power to go in the background. What I have here is I have a new intake manifold for it. Whatever the heck it looks like. From the research I've done, I believe they split somewhere down around here and these bolts can snap and break. So what we're going after today is we're going after a, are going to try and replace this e intake manifold relatively fast, relatively easy. That's what I'm tackling. Not going to be the nicest, cleanest, and easiest of jobs. It is buried in here underneath EGR valves, EGR coolers, fuel filter housing, all that kind of stuff. So you can't even really see where any of the smoke is coming out of. Just know that it's buried in at the inside of the intake manifold. Where are we going to start? Plop my airbox. Get the cover, this little yoke off the top of the engine, and I'm going to start heading in that way. I suppose the first thing I'm going to hit is that EGR valve and cooler and try and see, can I get that in hand? And then from there, we'll roll on. It's going to be a quite fast video. Uh, I'm under pressure or time restraints to get this thing done. So the long and short of it is, the faster I can get it done, the faster it's going to be back together, the faster it's back on the road. Hopefully we'll find proof in the pudding when we get in here and get something taken off of where this thing is either going wrong on us and where our boost leak is. That's it today, intake manifold, let's go. 10 minutes in, the air box off, piece of cover over the engine off, pulled off that little EGR pipe that was sitting down there. A lot of people ask me what size sockets they are. It's an E10 Torx socket, okay? Um, the only bit I'm meant to stopping me and making me fast make a recording is when I took off my EGR pipe, I can see water residue in there. I can't say whether that is just pure condensation from when that gets hot and then cools down or what. It's not really discolored, yet there's a slight taste of, you know, coolant, sometimes a little tip and a tip in my mouth. A slight taste of coolant off it, but we'd better, we'd better when we're in here, make sure that, that thing isn't leaking and causing any uh, problems. Anyway, I've actually no drop in coolant, I've just seen the tie there. Anyway, for now we're going to drive on. Where am I going to go now? I suppose the EGR cooler's bolted on there and there. I'm going to have to head back in the back and try and see what the heck is holding it on in here. I don't see as of yet, but we'll, we'll start pulling out a couple of bolts and get that in hand and that'll be a big benefit to us, hopefully. Okay, guys. I have taken off this little EGR cooler actuator out of my way there's um e6 e6 is holding in that three little bolts here i can see that someone has had a bolt out before me in here so i'm going to take off that bolt i have a bolt taken out here of the cooler and i'm hoping there's two pipes actually across where it gets its exhaust gas from i'm going to get that bracket on my way disconnect that block connector and hopefully then i'll be starting to move and get a bit of room and maneuverability there's a bracket actually sits down here with about four e10s in it they're quite tight and quite awkward to get in at but it's not so bad it's just a piece of piece of steel What's that yoke and yeah so the two bolts going across the one on the bracket and hopefully it'll be nearly in hand okay i have the two bolts out of the egr system where it's getting the exhaust gas from in at the back not so bad went in from up here had the ratchet and couple of extensions so came out easy enough uh, then as we know we had a bolt up here and a bolt down there and I got in then at that block connector for the EGR valve once that came out I hung a bit out of my way the block connector on there on the back just to make a bit of room here is our two bolts that we're looking at in at the back so look at least that's our EGR system off we're going to have a look and make sure that, that thing is all right and roll on in to our intake manifold. We're starting to get a bit more room, starting to see a bit more. At this point in time, at least we can yeah, envisage something in here. Fingers crossed we'll have 
Yeah, the next little one. Just doing a little bit of examining for my own self. We have two bolts that I can get here and two here, which would unbolt this little neck off of the throttle flap that's sitting down there. So I'm hoping that to get these two, to get these two, hopefully I'll take out these two and these two and this little neck part to come out. Then I might roll up the top, start taking off the wiring loom here to get out that fuel filter housing. I have a video on taking that off on a C-Class Mercedes, but I'm assuming this is very, very similar. Uh, fingers crossed again that you might get some bit of guidance from that if you needed it. Uh, fuel filter housing, I think, replacement or something along those lines is called. But we're gonna try this first and see where we end up. Okay, time to the bolts, pulled out that neck for me again. I'm then in there underneath the fuel filter where it, where it comes out of. There's one bolt sitting on the inside just there. And then we have one sitting just in there and that's the fuel filter housing. Starting to come out, I've disconnected our move duplicate from our water hose here and this one off here. And I'm gonna to have to take off this little small one once we get this kind of somewhere out or get a little bit of room. Okay, we're starting to get a visual in here. We're getting a bit closer. Okay, I'm about to take out a rank of bolts that are on there that are holding on the oak. There's two sitting over there, two sitting there, two sitting there, and two sitting here. So she's starting to come. Not out. One of the bolts in here was quite tight, so maybe that's still held on by a thread or two. Maybe. She's wiggling and woggling, but she's not. There we go, I can't even see around. Um, it's not coming out, so we'll have to try and figure out what's catching it. I'm assuming that maybe it's it's this bolt down here that was a little awkward. I didn't have to take off the wearing now, which is a bonus for me. Um, yeah, get it out and in hand and see what the heck is holding us in there. Okay, one intake manifold out and sitting here. Well, I was actually expecting to see a bolt or something broken here, but I haven't, and I do know they melt down the bottom, but that's a relatively, well, on the bottom it looks clean, but Weirdly or unusually, our gasket here is just broken. Like this side of it, I don't know why, but the bolts, I couldn't tell you if the bolts were fully tight or what, but I, I well, it's, it's gone actually right there. Look. The gasket is just at the breaking out of it. Whatever the heck caused that, I don't know. But anyway, neither here, there. That's the intake manifold off, and we have. The new one, getting ready to go on, give it a clean up and start reassembling all these silly plasticky bits and yeah, the whole lot in reverse. Okay, have fuel filter housing just sitting in place. We am sitting back on this little piece as well. A little, I didn't get that gasket that's down there, so a little sliver of sealer on that throttle body there on the top of it. And I'm gonna throw in a couple of bolts there, sit on my throttle body and then I can start rolling back and start looking at our EGR coolers and stuff like that. And yeah, there's kind of a bit more, we're coming back together. It's actually a horrible yoke, to be honest with you. There's bits of plastic. Bits of plastic in it every, everywhere, and everything is flimsy and a maze of stupid little stuff, to be honest with you. Doable, but just a horrible, horrible, if the truth be told. Um, yeah, but sure, there's nothing I suppose that we can do at this point, only keep on going and start closing it up. Right, I have my intake manifold and the neck and the throttle body bolted on. I'm starting to try and clean up a few bits and pieces in around here. As in, I put back in the fuel filter housing. We have water hoses and stuff fitted on, connected up. We have the fuel filter sitting in place of the wearing loom back in place. There's not a whole lot of ground made here, but it is a, an extremely stupid little yoke. It's awkward and messy and... Uh, all I'm trying to do is do it as comprehensively as possible and nice and slow and make sure every little clip and bracket is back on as it should. And when I was taking it apart, some little bits and pieces weren't in quite right. I was missing a bolt off this bracket here. I was missing this little vent for the vacuum system or whatever it was, wasn't held. And I'm trying to get them bits and pieces right. And I'm trying to put my intake system together before I go along and start testing and checking my EGR coolers and stuff. And yeah, well, at this point in time, look, I've, I've that much of it back together. I'm going to keep on going and yeah, finish off the last little few bits and pieces. We have my EGR cooler taken apart. All I do is a blow gun that connects to it and submerge the actual chamber itself in water and then put a bit of pressure on it. Uh, kind of nearly too hard because I have to hold in that to show on camera. I have to put in that, hold in that grommet with my hand while I pull the trigger on my 
blow gun, um, but it's not leaking anything. So that is only pure condensation. That's in there. Well, I'm presuming anyway, that is not leaking. So if that's not leaking, well, whippy do. We are going back together. As you know, I have most of my stuff back together up here. In inside, just left up here in a rag. I have my EGR valves and my few bits and pieces to be reassembled, but I see it. I think I'm going to start closing this thing. Start closing this thing up and start, yeah, turn the key in the next hour or so. And send her on the way, do an extended test drive and see where we end up. Cooler reassembled and bolting it all back together in here. Have my two bolts in the back gone in. Not so bad, actually. Uh, the second visit there just doesn't seem to bad. Um, to get in. What? You know, it's all relatively straightforward. The, I was going to point out something. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to point out. I wasn't happy with the way the EGR valve was working, so I'm after contacting the customer and we're after advising to replace. I just, it wasn't closing fully. Even though I cleaned it off, it still wasn't closing fully. I had a little bit of um, an air gap in there, so I remember replacing that. And that's it, we're, we're continuing on in our reassembly process. Okay, all our bits and pieces put back together. Vacuum canisters are back on, any bits of brackets and uh, EGR cooler changeover valve back on, EGR pipe back on, airbox sitting back on, cleaned up a few bits and pieces. Oh, just be the way, or by the way, I when the cooler was out, I actually power washed the inside of it to make sure it was good and clean and water flowing through it, and it is cool and gone back into it. Whatever other bits and pieces put back in here. Um, yeah, so we're we're coming back together. What I was going to do, and I was going to try and show you was potentially my, I was going to do an EGR, or trying to do an EGR relearn, but I don't see it on this thing. I had a look in after treatment just to see if it was in there. We'll do a relearn on the turtle creaky. Okay, what do we have? Do we have anything? It was telling me it wasn't supported on. I was like, okay, sure, look, we'll, we'll relearn that on your throttle valve. Switch off combustion engine, and continue, continue. Charge air. Temperature. Value 20 degrees. Let's continue. Turn the ignition off. Holding the phone with my right hand. Uh, no work may be performed on the vehicle during this period. We probably don't want to see this 60 seconds counting down, so I'll... Um, when I cut out or I'll turn the phone around, sure, halfway there. Turn the phone around and talk baloney for a while. Yeah, I I didn't, I don't have at this point in time fall code for or under boost. So I'm, I'm assuming at this stage that I've I've put a picture or a photo of the fall code I had back at the start of the video. Um, yeah, what, where are we at? We're nearly here. I'd like to do an EGR relearn after getting a, our initialization after getting a new EGR valve put into it. But if I can't find it, well, maybe it's just not doable. Might try an OBD and stuff like that, but outside of that, we're done. It's not the nicest of jobs, to be honest with you. It's going to get a couple of miles on the road to make sure it's okay, but I'll cut in a little while. We're going to done on this. Um, I cut in a while after a drive, made sure it was right and are boosting as the desired and the actual are as, as we want. Um, yeah. Kind of a stupid enough little job to be doing, but well doable. Oh, DIY work, would a DIYer be able to do it? Yeah, possibly. Just a little bit finicky. If you have a good memory on you and you can see where the bits and pieces go, kind of keep everything organised so you can get them. You know, am I going to turn back on the ignition, I wonder? Did it ask me to turn on the ignition? I'm going to turn on the ignition. Just because if the ignition is off, Potentially. Now I could be able to make a kibosh of this there now. Just seemed slow to be doing that. Any default codes. Total valve is okay. Component must not be replaced. Continue. Okay, well that's the only one we'll have. I'll do a bit of route and let's see what I can find on my EGR. Okay. I went out and I just went into engine management, ECM, and I went into special functions. And I believe I didn't go all the way in, but teach in processes and initialization after replacement of components. You can drive these particular filaments. You know, we're gonna go with that and just see. Surely I'm gonna get. Might do that 
as well, but I don't, um, I, again, I don't see. Ignition on, engine at a standstill, yeah. I like to do anything to do with the system that I'm working on. I like to do a lot of resets on as much stuff as I can. Because of that, I'll do airflow, I'll do turbo, I'll do EGR, I'll do anything. Sometimes when I'm in here, especially on the Mazda's, I'll do an oil dilution reset. Um, yeah, we can do, we do. Okay, the teaching process was successful. Okay, now do anyone see, no point me asking you, I've done that. Active fuel pump oxygen sensor, that was sensor there for that. I suppose look it's worth. No. Okay, so that's that out anyway. I'm gonna, I might be trying to do a bit of more routing. If you don't see me coming back on talking about this, look, I can't find it anymore. We're more okay, on. Again, teaching processes I went into. Configuration I checked in there, nothing in there. And I went into other. Exhaust, gas, recirculation, check. Maybe the car needs to be running. Um, combustion engine, idling, all electrical accessories must be switched off. There must be no current fault. Fault codes concerning the following components. Hot air, is hot air mass, intake air system, charge air system. Okay, so we're gonna, does this have to be smaller than 60 degrees? Explanation, the test takes about five minutes. Mikhail, you're not going to be watching this. We'll, um, the measurements must be within the permissible range. Press continue to a part. With a starter. And the battery's actually a bit flat. I've been stopped for a while. She won't even start. Oh, she will start. Okay, I think we'd have to sit here until that gets to, to um, by the looks of it, 60 degrees. And when we get there, look, I'll, I'll, yeah, check back in. But anyway, there we are. We can do it. An exhaust gas circulation check. And hopefully that's good okay, enough. Guys. Apologies for the glare, but I had to drive somewhere, so I drove. I left it taking over five minutes, so it didn't get up to temperature. So I went for a spin. So at this point in time, I'm happy enough. We're 92 degrees, gonna press continue. And we'll just see what's going to happen. Initialization running. Said it could take about five minutes, so we're just gonna leave it. Diagnostic system initialization. The dynamic test of exhaust gas for circulation, 0%. Activation exhaust gas positioner to obtain stable measurements. Uh, a waiting time of approximately 30 seconds is necessary. I'm just going to leave a run through this thing and we'll, uh, we'll start again when I think I'm complete. Okay, again, guys, apologies for the glare. Can we get me out of the picture? I wonder. So the check was okay. Do -do -do -do. Exhaust gas recirculation positioner may not be replaced. We have replaced it but this is just kind of saying that we're happy enough with where we're at on that bit of is it live data yeah we're seeing live data what they're looking for numbers between parameters excuse me and yeah it's exactly quite happy with where we're at so anyway it's giving a bit of information so continue okay that i'm believing nearly is that i'm after driving to I had to go to Dungarvan from my place, which is about 24 or 5 miles away. I'm going to class this at this point. Well, I won't. No, I'll drive her home again, and then I'll class this as a as a fix, maybe at that point. I'll get her back down the road and see what Okay, it. guys. In my barrage, I still have to put on that box down here. Parts and stuff have to get out of the car, but we have another 40 miles or so done. No trouble code, so I am happy at this point in time. We were getting it back within a couple of moments, so we'd be due. we are done for this one. We're out and we're moving on to the next one and yeah, I hope you got something from this. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all next cartoon. Guys, Peter Kennedy signing out Mercedes Sprinter Intake Manifold and EGR Replacement. Guys, talk to you later.